This is not how Mars used to appear. Oceans could have previously covered it. But what if we extracted all the water from Mars and turned it into a partially blue planet? Mars may have once been submerged under a large ocean. Additionally, the planet may have had rivers, streams, and lakes dispersed across it. It's possible that Earth and Mars had climates that were comparable billions of years ago. On the other hand, the surface temperature was a little lower, and the Martian ocean only covered 20% of the planet as opposed to 71% on Earth. All of it was made possible by an environment that didn't last long enough. Mars' protective magnetic field vanished 4 billion years ago, and the solar winds began to sweep away all of its atmosphere. After a few hundred million years, Mars evolved into the planet we know it to be today from a warm, moist globe. Dry in Chile With the polar ice caps locked, just 8% of its ocean is still there. Therefore, a lot of water would need to be added to Mars if you wanted to make it a planet that was half land and half ocean. Now, let's take a moment to reflect on our own planet before attempting to make Mars a friendlier place to live. Help is more necessary than ever for our folks. Americans have been finding it difficult to make ends meet due to rising economic disparity, low salaries, and crisis after catastrophe. And the government is in possession of a potent instrument that might enhance life. The American Tax Code. You know, they could give money to those in need rather than relying on subsidized programs, allowing individuals to spend it whichever suits them best. Low-income families might feel secure knowing they have greater control over their everyday life with financial assistance. Now is a pivotal time. Because the federal minimum wage is now at its lowest level in 66 years. It's time to take action and defend people who, despite their efforts, are just just managing to survive. The best approach to transform the face of our nation and our world right now is to help our folks when they need it. The majority of Earth is covered with seas, unlike Mars. What do you think about giving our red neighbor part of that water? I'll tell you right now that's a terrible idea. You would need to transport around 20% of our ocean water to Mars in order to construct Martian seas as deep as Earth's. And our aquatic life would suffer as a result. Leave the seas on Earth where they belong, I agree. Additionally, there are a few additional locations in the solar system where water may be found. Like Jupiter's Europa and Saturn's Enceladus. They may contain two times as much water as Earth does. But in order to convey part of that priceless H-20 across space, huge ice blocks would be necessary. To say the least, it would be challenging to pull this off. You would need rockets that could move a lot of weight. And you'd need cash. A lot of it, yes. The cost may reach $1,500 per kilogram, 2.2 pounds. The total cost of this process would be far into the billions of dollars when taking into account the amount of water you would need. Yeah, I realize it's pricey. However, there could be a different approach of returning with Martian water. You'll also like this one since it contains nuclear weapons. Yes, you did hear me correctly. The Crimson Planet is soon to be destroyed. And certainly, it would get some water from this. How? Well, all that energy would defrost the carbon dioxide from Mars. The poles would melt as a result of rising temperatures. Similar to bringing about controlled climate change. Just around 3,500 nuclear bombs would need to go off every day. Additionally, delivering twice as many bombs each day as the United States presently possesses in its entire arsenal would be required. To emit so much radioactive material is a significant quantity. Additionally, Mars wouldn't exactly become livable. To fill half of the Earth with seas, you would also need a lot more water. I guess it's not the greatest idea to nuke everything in sight. Instead, maybe you ought to take a brief course in planetary history. A constant stream of asteroids struck Mars during the late bombardment period around 4 billion years ago. This finally produced enough water to form a 300 meters, 1,000 feet deep ocean. All you would have to do is reproduce this occurrence in the present. 
so that they would wind up on a crash trajectory with Mars, you would need to divert at least a million comets and meteors. The comets would burn up and discharge water vapor when they collided with Mars. Continue until you have produced enough water to cover half of the red planet. Where would the water go, though? Considering Mars geography, you would discover that the majority of the additional water would land over the planet's equator. New landmasses that resemble continents would exist on Mars. On some places of the world, there might even be mountains protruding from the surface. The highest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons, would now soar high from Mars' new northern ocean. However, just because you could transport enough water to cover half the Earth doesn't imply it would last. All of this water would quickly boil away due to Mars' low air pressure. But wait, if water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius 212 degrees Fahrenheit, how would it evaporate? That is the Earth's boiling point, I see. At 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit, water would begin to boil on Mars. That's annoying, particularly considering how much effort you put into delivering all of this water to Mars. This water vapor would have to act as a greenhouse gas, you would have to hope. You may be fortunate enough to be the first person from Earth to ever take a swim on another planet if it was able to trap enough heat in the Martian atmosphere to transform it into a beautiful terraformed paradise. What would life be like for the first 100 years on Mars? That's a tale for another Raju online, however.